Hello everyone, today I'm bringing you the update for my famous Turbo Multi-Strike build. Uh, the build has changed a bit with this patch, it's definitely gotten better thanks to, you know, some of the new polearm bases, thanks to some changes in, in the trees and some changes in the, in the abilities. And obviously the new legendary system and the new crafting makes progression for this build who used to be and is a really, really expensive build, a bit easier to progress. So I think it is uh, a better time to play this build now than before. It is still, however, a very advanced build. So if this is your first character and you're looking for a build guide, this is definitely not the character for you. But uh, it's still my favorite build. It's the most fun build. It's still super strong. It's not the fastest in Monolith, but you can basically do all the content. I've done tier 4 dungeon multiple times with it on melee, which obviously it's the hardest thing you can do pretty much. You can push arena as high as you your skill takes you. And uh, again, and it's a complete blast to play. Um, I'm going to show some gameplay and then we're going to go over all the changes. As you can see, one of the uh, good things about this build is its mobility and uh, you know the fact that it's probably the highest skill cap build in the game at the moment. Um, let's take, uh, let's go to the hub and let's talk about it. So the main difference uh, from the previous version and the current version is that uh, due to the, pre the existence of the build Auto Bomber uh, the Bowering Orb has seen massive changes that makes, uh, they basically nerf the duration and that obviously really impacts uh, the build, right? We used to use all of this, the cascading uh, Dark Torrent kind of orbs in order to proc slow, chill, armor shred, void shred and right now with the current uptime, is I don't think it's as valuable. Uh, they also changed the increased melee da uh, damage to just be just void damage so it's not affecting our physical side of the build. So I decided to change for sigils. So uh, how does the build work? Uh, this would be your normal multi-strike, right? And you can see our damage is not that great, right? We don't have that much crit, right? We're hitting, my gear is really good. So, uh, you know, with a bit of armor shred and a bit of void shred, our damage can go up to like the 50Ks or whatever. Your first hit is gonna be like a 20, right? With good gear. And then when you start getting, you know, your attack speed with volatile, your increased damage with sigils and uh, you start stacking the increased damage uh, done on uh, you can see the damage can ramp up really good you have all your shadows hitting for you and applying more shred and void shred uh, and you know that's kind of like the build works you obviously have lunch for mobility you can do a lot of things i mean i have a really in-depth guide for mechanics uh, about this build on how to actually play it again you can do crazy things like you know you can cancel your dashes you can, uh, you know, you can kite, bait objectives. You can, you can do really crazy stuff with this build, uh, and it's it's crazy mobility. So again, let's take a look uh, on uh, some of the, the the changes that uh, this build had. Uh, let's go over the planner because obviously my gear is a bit better than what the average uh, person is gonna be able to get so i'm kind of a, i'm gonna go over a normal build planner and then we'll take a look at what a advanced build planner should look like so this would be your your base uh your based uh your base version uh when it comes to the passives 
uh, not much has changed, you know, we go for the strength, obviously strength is damage, the resistances, we go for the damage, less damage taken, this is the only damage reduction we have in this build, you have the HP and the cooldown since we need the mobility on, on launch, you go for the mana gain because obviously sigils is quite expensive, uh, we grab enough points to get sigils of hope, again, uh, we're getting some elemental resistances that we need on the build, so if you need more than 5 points, you just shift points from this HP into the resistances. So you know if you put on your gear and you're still lacking uh, resistances, just take points of this and put them here, pretty straightforward. And then we go to the Void Knight, okay? So you notice that I haven't taken uh, some of the vitality that we have here, because what we want to do is we want to stack as many points in Void Knight so this point gets value. So again, we get vitality here, we get vitality here, and this is actually buffing or crit multiplier thanks to this. So if you have to grab vitality, better grab it from the Void Knight tree. So you also get the crit multiplier. Again, the very classic uh, Sentinel setup. You go for the Abyssal Endurance for the HP and the resistances. Really good points, really good value for 10 points. You got the World Eater. This is basically one of the things that makes this build strong. The fact that you do so much uh, melee damage and you have so much Void damage that... This is the entire reason why we go void damage, so we can benefit from world leader and the anomaly synergy. Obviously, you grab all the flat damage you can, uh, all the flat damage you can. You get the strength, the health. Again, like you mentioned, strength is damage and armor that will make us beefy. We get enough points so we can get the increased uh, void damage. That's a hundred for four points. Really good value. Some armor on kill. Really good value. Really good value also on 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 the just the base increased damages. And some vitality with the points that we have left that we have left. We get the eternal form for the huge boost of uh, vitality and health. All of the echoes and increased attack speed. And again, depending on your gear, you might not be comfortable taking this echo. If your gear is not really good, if your attack speed is not really good, take this echo, take take this point out and just put it in vitality or whatever. Again, this is kind of optional. You don't need it, but you know if you're playing arena, if you're doing really high density content. You, this actually procs quite often, and you know, it's, you can get a, a lot of damage from this because you, you know, you get the 15% void with the 15% increased melee. So uh, it, it's actually pretty good value for just one point. If it procs, it procs, you know, kind of deal. Okay, let's go over the skills now, okay? Let's go over the skills. Uh, multi strike. We're just going full damage, we're grabbing all the damage multipliers, so every time you see a more damage multiplier, more damage, more damage, we grab it. We grab the base crit because we need it, since we lost a lot of crit on Sentinel uh, since the land changes two patches ago. Uh, we grab, uh, obviously, the more damage on, on maximum stacks, and then we grab the lances. The lances will give us AoE, and also, like, if you position yourself, like, for example, when you attack a single, a single target, right, like this, the lances are not gonna proc, right? But if you have trash mobs right here and the boss or like the big objective is behind it, when you attack the trash mobs, oh, the lances are gonna go like a porcupine, you know, they're gonna be like a, like a Spartan phalanx. It's gonna go like boom, boom, boom. So if you line up the trash mobs with the tanky and the rare mobs, basically you are kind of, you kind of like shotgun them with all the procs of the different spears. From, from your passive, and they have really good range. Uh, the spears are basically to get that shotgun effect, to clear a lot of the trash. Sometimes it's really convenient, you know, when you're attacking like uh, enemies that are far away, and uh, you know, you kind of like kill them by, you know, you're attacking the melee enemies in front of you, and by with the spears, you also kill the range enemies that are a bit far away. So this is pretty, pretty, pretty good. By far, uh, my favorite, uh, my favorite part of multi strike. <clears throat> Again, volatile reversal is the normal setup, you know, where you go for the, the the attack speed, the movement speed. This buff can stack every time you use it. So again, a, a lot of you already know this, right? It's on it's on my mechanics guide. But you know, once you have the cooldown reduction of of, uh, of anomaly, uh, volatile reversal, you can use it. You see your attack speed go off or movement speed goes off, and you can just stack this, right? Like if we you, we're gonna lose one stack, and now we're gonna lose the second stack. Right, so and that also works for the attack speed, and it also works for the increased damage done on enemies. So if you if you you know 
dash on 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 the enemies and you hit them with bo both of your both of your uh things you see we hit for 60 already without any other buff when normally we're hitting for 20 right again using volatile effectively it's also really important because obviously normally enemies are just not gonna stare they're just not gonna stand there for you like the dummy so to actually benefit from this in combat is gonna take a while if you don't have a plus two to volatile which is what i recommend on your helmet just take you could you can take points off this you know or uh, and and just max this you won't get all the movement speed but you know just try to really look forward to that plus plus uh to volatile reversal on your helmet if you can uh for lunch again really straightforward uh you get all the cooldowns so when you attack uh you get extra charges all that right and you can use it more often you get the invulnerability again we get iframes while we are lunging right so if you see a big projectile coming at you there's a group of archers you see the arrows coming you do this while you're in the air you have iframes so again if you combine lunge with volatile you see what i did there right you can just lunge and then when you volatile you calculated where you're gonna land previously and you you know you lunge and then the volatile applies applies directly the buff you can you can again you can get really fancy with this build it's it, it almost doesn't even feel like playing an action rpg it feels like you're playing a mob or something and i'm down i love it it's my favorite build for that reason uh let's keep going over the skills then we go sigils this is the addition to the build this patch we used i used to use this back in patch 7.6 and now it's making a comeback because orb is not as useful anymore why is sigils so good it's because you get a shit ton of damage basically right you get three sigils you get all the damage per sigil you get all the flat damage it's four flat damage uh, plus three per sigil so again you're getting a shit ton of flat damage you get the increased void damage and obviously all the flat gets converted to void and not only that but every time you use sigils for three seconds you get on top of that global 150 per increase damage we make it instant cast so the idea right like when you're playing like you're doing your combos and you know you can use sigils every three seconds your mana goes up you keep your sigils up your mana goes up right and you keep a perma up time basically the sigils buff right and because it's instant cast you don't actually have to stop attacking uh again you you need to make micromanage this otherwise if you just have it like that and you you know you're just gonna go um you won't be able to launch it's gonna be really tragic so again, if you want to use sigils effectively, 100% uh, use it with, uh, you know, you have to micromanage it. Um, so it is what it is. Again, it's a pretty uh, micro-intensive build to play, but I think it's absolutely worth it. And then we have uh, the queen, you know, of Void Knight Anomaly. Uh, we grab the immediacy so we don't have to double click it just to get a bit more of a smoother gameplay. We get the time bubble, we get the time bubble on us right there. Uh, we get obviously all the crit chance here that you guys can see, but you put as many points as you have left here. I have a plus three, so I get three. You could, if you don't have enough crit chance on your gear, you take points off here and you put them on the crit chance just to max out your crit. And you get you get the time bubble effects for two seconds. I like this point. <clears throat> I like this point a lot because sometimes you have anomaly, right? And you're fighting like a really uh, hard enemy. And, you know, you basically have uh, uptime or anomaly kind of perma with this, right? With this setup. But what happens is like, maybe, you know, when you cast anomaly, you, you, you actually like stop. You can see, I'm gonna stop to cast it. And, you know, when you're doing really high tier content, you're finding the hardest bosses, etc. That stopping there, if you can kill you. Uh, so i really like having the extra two seconds because for example you know if i have it you know and suddenly uh you know i'm f i'm doing i'm fighting or whatever right and then i see it's about to go off cooldown but then i see oh i'm gonna use it oh fuck i see a big projectile you know i still keep the effects for two seconds move out of it and then i use it so this is kind of like a safety net so you don't have to you know have it on auto cast or whatever that's why i manually cast all of my abilities because uh if you have it on autocast and it casts at the wrong time, you're dead. So again, I I, I don't recommend autocasting uh, for that reason. And I recommend this point in order to mitigate that. Again, the leech is really strong. We have a shit ton of leech, a shit ton of flat damage. 
and uh, yeah, you end up having you're, with the, with these points, you're gonna end up leeching, uh, you know, up to like 65% of all the damage you do, right? Leech is not capped. Uh, it it will cap. It will, however, expire if you like top up your life. So building life is really good for this build because leech gets more value, and that is one of the reasons why we're gonna itemize itemize for life, right? Uh, with just basic gear, no exalted, nothing. It's something that you can just anyone can get. You get like three thousand life, four thousand armor. <clears throat> Again, the EHP of this build, even though it looks beefy, it's not beefy at all. You because you don't have access to damage reduction like other classes have. Unfortunately, Sentinel without using a shield is somehow the squishiest class in the game. Don't ask me how. Depths probably need to balance the game a bit. But just keep in mind, even though you look beefy. The only thing that is really keeping you alive is your movement, you dodging abilities, your, Im your, your immunity on lunch, and just healing up every time you take a small hit with all your uh, health leech, uh, right? Okay, uh, let's go over the gear now. Big changes on the gear. Uh, spears have been changed, and now uh, I think the best weapon to use is Trident. Just because the crit multi it comes with is absolutely insane. This will make it so making crit chance is going to be way harder. So ideally, you want to get a trident that has at least, at least, tier 6 crit chance, right? In order to for the build to feel like you're consistently critting. If you don't have this, I highly recommend just using a dragon slayer glaive. Just because it comes it comes with up to seven flat crit chance. So I would say Dragon Slayer Glaive is like the beginner build, but you really wanna work towards having a good trident like the one I have. Uh we got ours on stream actually. Uh I'm gonna pop up the clip because I think it's pretty hype. But basically <clears throat> I got this one on stream and we sealed it and everything. You can see there. Get your clips ready. The melee boy damage, melee crit strike chance tier six. We seal the sh the slow. We have the tier five chance to shred, and we actually hit. We actually hit the the seal, and we managed to get tier three slow on it. As you can tell, my reaction and chat going crazy and shit. Uh, we obviously didn't. I wasn't expecting to get so much value out of just oh, like yeah. twelve potential or whatever. <laughs> so pretty hype. I'm pretty happy with my weapon. I'm really happy that we also got it on stream, so it's like it's like a really good memory. And again, you can see I get pretty pretty lucky with the crafts. Again, the new crafting system really supports Holy weapons shit. <laughs> weapons like this. So you know, keep grinding until you get a good one. <clears throat> then you know, not much of the gear has changed. Uh, so if you have seen my previous guide, nothing much changes. You want to get your strength, your crit chance. You want to get Siphon of Anguish, so you get that Doom for the big, uh, hopefully a high tier one. Prioritize the chance to apply Doom, because this will up, this will ramp up your single target damage by a mile, because it makes enemies take more damage. Uh, you know you're gonna, and it gives you Leech, Movement Speed. Everything here is desirable for your class. You want to get Auroras if possible. Uh, if you don't have that, just run any Bone Amulet, anything with resistances, right? Any, anything with health. This basically gives you two lives, gives you a bunch of attack speed. It helps you cap your endurance, right? Really nice. And you know, and engra grave gauntlets, attack speed, crit chance, hybrid health, increased armor everywhere you can. Again, the helmet. Try to get that plus volatile reversal with plus two anomaly. I would say volatile reversal is more important early on, just because you really want to hit. You want to have those movement speed points plus the more damage done points, like I explained earlier. And you know, just get crit multi everywhere you, you can, get uh, get your hybrid health, <clears throat> make sure that your belt has cleanse on potion so you can cleanse all the ailments from mobs. And uh, you know, that's pretty much the build. Since we're not using orb now, we can't really rely on proccing slows and chills anymore. <clears throat> but uh, so I would say it's good to get your poison resistance just out of the way with the dragon blessing. Just go for it, get your endurance from uh, from uh, Spirits of Fire and just get your increased armor from from uh, from Heroth, you know. Uh, again, for idols, pretty classic, increased damage if echoed recently, so every time you echo, your damage just bumps up like crazy, plus the armor shred, 
Again, we're doing a lot of damage and we're playing melee. We're doing a lot of hits, so the armor shred is going to really ramp up the damage of the build like you saw in the dummy. You want to get Throne of Ambition, especially if you're bossing, because again, we have a lot of flat armor. And with this, you're going to get like, I mean, 20 stacks, 20%. You know, you're going to get 400 increased armor, whatever. And your armor is going to ramp up to the, you know, like the 70s, 80, like 70 something damage mitigation. So this this basically makes you a beast against bosses. Uh, really good burst for doing the dungeon. Really good for doing those high corruption like uh, end game bosses. And again, then you just cap your void resistance because you're not gonna have enough being a void knight. You get up 64, so you need two idols to cap it off without uh, orb. And then you know whatever elemental resistance you buy me missing with some armor. If you have if you're capped on, uh, you can also use the health suffix on these small idols. And that's pretty much it when it comes to like what's the basics of the build. Again, it's really fun. Uh, doing the boss, uh, the dungeon boss is really fun. If you guys want to see it, let me know. I because I have it record, so maybe we can. I could do a video about that, so you guys can see it. And uh, and yeah, I mean, I think it's just uh, really fun. Uh, since we mentioned, you know, that the new crafting system is so powerful, and the new items are so powerful, and legendaries are so powerful. Go my, my current goals, right? With my character, things that I want to go for. Obviously, I highlighted. You're gonna have this planner also in the description. I hi I highlighted everything like you would want as an exalted. So you would want the health. You would want the health and the health and the health on your health pieces. You would want your crit multi on your crit pieces. You would want your crit chance on your weapon. And you know, for your amulet, you would want some health and Ideally, what you would like to do is you would you would like to transfer this ivory ring, right, into a tier four uh, quicksilver coil. You can see there uh, uh, in the bottom line, right there, like right here next to the, right there, next to the text, it says uh, required level thirty six. Effective level for legendary potential is zero. That means that getting four legendary potential on this ring is actually really easy. Well. It's not really easy, but it's the easiest kind of item that can drop with four potential. So I think this is a realistic goal for you if you're playing this build a lot. Uh, and again, the idea would be just like grab your GG ring and put it into this. So you get your ring plus the haste. And because we would we will lose the implicit necrotic resistance, we would have to get, you know, uh uh C for the Fanguish. You know, uh again, this one is effective uh Le le level 4 legendary 40 so i think aiming for a 3 potential is probably uh, reasonable and again ideally you would want that necrotic resistance the endurance and if you can get crit chance on top of it then then you're the king of the world right but i would focus on that necrotic resistance and other endurance mainly because if we get the endurance we can drop uh the the endurance blessing since we were a bit over capped and you can see we still keep their 60 percent endurance while getting a bunch of armor uh, that would obviously require best in slot gear, and again we could change we could change our or just boots since we don't need that much fire resistance. We could change our boots for dark strides. Those these ones have effective legendary level of seventy, so obviously uh, aiming at more than two potential is gonna be a bit I think a bit aspirational. But I think getting I already I I have actually already dropped these boots with two potential even though I I didn't succeed on the craft. So, but I know they are possible, and this is something that you can realistically aim at, just because in three days I already got a chance at it. So, obviously that would bump us our HP like a thousand, it, be, it would bunch our armor like a thousand, and we would get a shit ton of damage, way more crit chance, etc. Things that you are might be looking to seal on your gear, you might want to seal a plus one multi-strike, you know, on your, on your armor. You might want to seal, you know, like a like a uh, frailty for example a tier 1 frailty or something like that on your on your on your gloves uh, you know you might want to you you want us do what i did on my weapon that i showed in the video you want to see like a slow why not just have to slow there since you don't have it anymore uh, etc you know sealing is not as mandatory again you probably want to seal you know the tier 1 uh, cleanse so you can get maybe some increased physical damage or chance to find potions whatever you want uh, again, remember, guys, that if you use a rune of uh, a rune of uh, despair, you know, in order to cleanse, 
on an exalted item and the, uh, and the affix you're trying to cleanse is tier 1, it's 100% gonna get sealed. If it's tier 2, the chance is gonna go lower. If it's tier 3, even lower. And if it's tier 4, it's gonna be almost impossible or whatever, right? So again, make sure you're smart with your uh, ceilings because a 1%, uh, a tier 1 is 100% guaranteed on a purple item, okay, to be sealed. Again, that's pretty much the build guide. Uh, again, the build is a blast. Uh, I'm really happy uh, overall with the patch. I think a lot of builds are getting that juice that they needed. And obviously the OP builds are even more OP, but that's a different discussion. I love this build. Uh, like you guys know, I've been working on it for more than two years now. And I om I'm almost like a proud father when it comes to this build. You know, I've, I've seen him go to school, now to university, and now... It feels like the build is graduating. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the build. Uh, I know this video has been a bit long, but it's a build that I think it's a bit... It takes a bit more than just like, you know, copy the planner and the build would work. Because that's not the case at all. And yeah, I hope you guys like it. And um, I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye.